Hello, hello, hello. All right, this is my first, uh, my first official Midnight Drawer uh, live stream. I test drove one before and it went pretty good. I was the only audience, so I thought it was, uh, I thought it was a hell of a show. Um, I'm starting things off right here uh, tonight. It's just some classic um, Raging Bull whiskey. Insiders might know what's actually in that, and it is in fact whiskey. That's actually some good old-fashioned Jack Daniels right there. So feels like it's the right way to start. So cheers. Um, yeah, it's late at night. It is midnight somewhere in the world. So anybody that's actually joining us at midnight, cheers and welcome. I, uh, I'm going to draw something kind of spooky and something that's going to be helpful for me because I have a lot of drawing to do tomorrow, and it's been a while since I, uh, since I was on the board. So give me one second. All right. I uh, well, I had a big day today. I um, announced finally my uh, my first solo single is coming out. It's a song called Shiver, and uh, it feels like it's kind of right for the time of year. So I, yeah, it's been a full on day. I haven't had a ton of time to draw in the last few days, just getting everything ready for this and. Uh, like ready for the release and there's all this stuff coming up so I've had to kind of uh, put my pen and pencils down a little bit but um, yeah you know I uh, I need to get some drawing done and I need to get back in the swing of things and I have um, I have four more books of the next series of Nottingham to draw so I figured tonight uh, just to get like I said back into the swing of how the whole thing's gonna go here I'm going to uh, I'm gonna draw the sheriff but I think I'm going to draw like zombie sheriff of Nottingham here. So um, I kind of did a little, a, a quick doodle here to try to figure it out. But I just need to check one thing here. Hopefully everything is working. Let me just double check that everything is streaming right. It's my first stream. So, you know, I can kind of do whatever I want. Plus I got like, uh, at the moment I have 15 subscribers. So. If uh, one or two people are on here, you'll have to just bear with me while I do this. <laughs> it's my first time and I'm running the whole show here on my own. So, um, yeah, you know, I just want to see and make sure everything is looking right. All right, there it is. Okay. It's my first stream, so, you know. And it actually looks like... Uh, Tom Slay is here. Oh man, we got a couple. We got a couple people here. I gotta say, this is my first. This is like my first thing, um, and uh, I've already got people on the chat hanging out at midnight or wherever it is uh, your your guys' time. Um, but now I see everything's up and running. Uh, I am going to get into this thing and stop yakking and start doing some drawing here. So I want to say thanks. You are the uh, you're the first two people to ever tune into this. So uh, it's pretty sweet. All right, um, where is where is this thing? Cheers to you guys! All right, let's do some drawing. So this is um, okay. This is Zombie Sheriff of Nottingham. I've never drawn a zombie before. Uh, you guys, can you hear me? Okay, just want to make sure it says that my audio and everything's working. But let me know. Yeah, midnight in Ontario. You can yak. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've never been accused of not being able to talk. Okay. I did a live stream. I'm sure you guys and some people that might watch this later may be tuned into. Um, it was the last Mad Cave uh, showcase, and I've only done one other live stream where I had to talk and draw, and I, I mean, I failed miserably. I'm not afraid to say it. I also lost my eraser. Yeah, I had all the shit laid out here. Well, I'm gonna have to use this one. I had all my shit laid out here, and then there we go. Anyway, yeah, I had to do the Mad Cave showcase, and it went well. I thought. The new host, Sage, was really cool and asked good questions. But I realized that I get 
kind of weirdly nervous when I'm being interviewed in drawing. I'm sure other people feel the same way. Gonna have Zombie Sheriff like holding his sword here. All right. Let's see if we can see that at all. And I love it. I love seeing the chat light up already. First stream and the chat's lighting up. That's good to see. All right. I'm doing, uh, I'm getting silent now because I'm drawing a hand and I'm sure most comic artists can probably attest to the fact that hands are tricky to draw at the best of times, let alone when you're trying to talk and be somewhat entertaining. Okay. So Ev, Blackthorn's got the big nose. It's funny. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you guys have, there's, there's probably Nottingham fans out there. Love it. Um, I caught a lot of heat. I'm not going to say I caught, I didn't catch any heat from Mad Cave or from David, the writer or anybody about, uh, you know, making Ev not like a gorgeous... Hollywood leading male <laughs> he's like he's like the uh, absolute antithesis of good looking um but it's actually pretty funny how many like you know obviously people dug the books but I got a lot of heat on not making him good looking and people specifically were like oh his fucking nose is so big and like it's just funny I feel like People have shit they want to see in comics or just shit they like in comics and anything that even remotely deviates from that, like it just, they can't stand it. Okay. it's He's zombie Ev, so I'm going to give him like a weird, weird like looking. He's dead and loving it. Zombie smile. So I can knock some of his teeth out. Okay. Anyway, yeah, I caught a bit of heat from uh, oh, just some like people that reviewed the book and stuff, and they're like, basically, no one in the story is good, and no one is good looking. Oh, well, Marion's good looking, but there's like, there's a reason for that. Um, I just thought it was funny, or maybe people are just offended because he had like kind of a big nose. I don't know. People are strange with their tastes. That's all I know. So um, my process is pretty similar to most people, I'd imagine. I mean, uh, I usually take, I take most of my time on pencils and I actually do all my penciling digitally. Like I lay it all out in the computer. It's just a lot quicker. I mean, I could do it on paper if I wanted to take like three days a page. Um, but I usually lay it out on the computer, then I like print out the blue lines and then I just ink away and I ink super fast. Ev's got to have scars. Your art style is you and I like it. I dig that. You know, it's funny. I felt like... Um, I felt like when I was doing basically like the audition for Mad Cave when I was doing the, um, I should actually stream sometime what I uh, what I did for the uh, the tryout. I did like a little five page story. I think maybe I should share that sometime. It was pretty fun actually. Um, but I just I was concerned like they'd want a house style or I mean I know obviously DC and. Marvel have like a pretty ingrained house style and I was kind of going to go for that for a while. Um, but man, I don't know. Yeah, I draw like I draw. I draw like I draw and I sing like I sing and I mean, some people dig it, some people fucking hate it and I mean, really, those people can 
those people can go listen to the music that they enjoy. <laughs> okay. Okay, it's like a basic layout here. My stream's a little bit behind what I'm actually doing live here, but... Uh, All right, that's more or less it. It's Ev, he's got the sword. I dig that you guys... Ronningham's my favorite book of 2021. Love it. Embrace the messiness. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, I've seen people try to do like the super messy style and not... Well, I am not going to say that I've been nailing anything, but I feel like since I started to embrace it more, I've definitely like I've gotten more comfortable. And it's like the more I've embraced this style, more people have given me like good feedback and um, just started to dig my work. I mean, I just draw naturally that way. I think it's just kind of naturally the way I go. Um, I mean, the old saying is just be true to yourself, right? Okay, I'm going to give them a big kind of... Well, he's a zombie, so he's got like a big disgusting mouth here. Well, none of these zombies have eyebrows. i got to get rid of the eyebrows. I guess they're kind of like... Just like a skull face, eh? The only thing I'm going to pencil out tight ish here is his face because I feel like if I don't nail that this is not going to work out and then I'm going to add my favorite thing <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to add my favorite thing to this that is my wife's least favorite thing which is drool um, my dad, when I first, I, I got the Nottingham gig and I forget what I was sketching out. And, uh, he told me, basically he told me it would look better if he was drooling. And I really took that to heart. And so anytime I can draw somebody like with drool running down, just makes them look more crazy and scary. Okay. Sorry if, sorry if you guys can't tell what this quite is yet, but. Let's see here. Still has to have the long hair. Can make his ear kind of all fucked up like that. All right. Let's keep checking the stream here to make sure it's good. Zombie, take away his nose at everyone. <laughs> yeah. Most non-Canadian stream with no A or bud. Oh, fuck, bud. You want me to throw the fucking A's and buds in here? You got her. I'll just fucking write. I'll write fucking knock his nose off. Sometimes I forget that like 99% of the not the Nottingham fan base is based in the U.S. So yeah, sorry to disappoint. I'm still gonna kind of give him a full head of hair here. Yeah, I'm sorry to disappoint. Though I've uh, I've had Canadian friends of mine tell me that I have like a like a North Dakota accent, and I mean. My band has toured the States and I, when we went through North Dakota, I was trying to pick up on what this like accent I supposedly have is and I don't know, I couldn't hear it. Okay, I've knocked out some teeth. All right. <laughs> Okay, let's get into some ink.
I think as these streams go, I'm probably going to like calm down and settle in. And uh, I probably should have planned this a little bit more before I got into it, but I was just kind of excited to do it. So don't need that one. We need that one. My whole deal with this like midnight drawer thing is that I draw so much late at night and uh, I don't know. It's just a different world at night. I mean, I feel like anybody could draw at like 10 a.m., but late at night, there's just this whole world that happens. And um, yeah, I don't know. I was going somewhere with that thought. And something about pre-planning and being ready. And But then I thought, just do your nighttime thing where you get into a weird mood and talk about all sorts of different crazy shit. Uh, I can't find my, can't find the micron I need. Okay, that's the five. Oh, shit. There it is. Okay. I also, right now, I got Batman 89 on. I was watching baseball before. I was watching, uh, I was watching Boston kick the shit out of Houston, which was nice. I'm a Yankees fan, so I'm not a Boston fan, but I hate Houston more than any other team in the league, so I was fine watching Boston kick the shit out of them tonight. Anyway, I got Batman 89 on for a little bit of inspiration here. This is probably, more than any other movie, the one that got me into comic books and just like the world of superheroes and all of that. So, <laughs> morning people are evil. McMain, you made it. Where's the lag? Um, I think I'm going to save the lag for a time where... Um, it, that's like a celebratory drink. The Jack is like a calm my nerves drink, right? So, <laughs> thanks for showing up, buddy. Appreciate it. I wanted this one. Now I don't want it. All right. All right, it's time for the fun part. I did all the, um, I did the first series 99% digitally, except for the covers are all uh, traditional. And I did uh, a few kind of important pages, especially some stuff in um, book five in pencil and ink. But I did it mostly traditionally because I was terrified to ink the shit and do it on time. But now I finally, I started book seven or sorry, book six. And I think I did like three or four pages digitally. And then I just, it wasn't working for me. I couldn't do what I wanted to do. And I finally I realized it was time to stop being scared and just pick up my microns and my Sharpies and shit and just go to town, go to work. So now I'm pretty much doing everything traditional. And yeah, I love it. I love it. Love to see you draw 89 Batman or 89 Joker. All right. Hey, that's one thing I want to hear you guys uh, when I do these things. I'd love to hear um, suggestions on things you want to see me draw. Because, I mean, I know the stuff I want to draw. And obviously right now I'm, I'm locked into a pretty... A pretty heavy um, Nottingham phase here again while I'm drawing these books. Man, I wonder if David's going to be pissed that I'm drawing his guy as a zombie. He'll probably dig it. It's funny, I kind of picked an easy pose here and stuff so that I could just like chat with everybody and not get all fucking weird about making it perfect. But now all of a sudden I'm just like, oh, I'm taking too much time and I want to do too good of a job instead of having fun here. If you're not having enough fun, that's what this is for. Mm-hmm. All right. I got two votes for Batman. Batman, Tom, is it Batman 89 specifically? Actually, that's a good question because um, I, I mean, 
I'm not going to lie. Like, I know that there's pros and cons for working for the big two and, you know, people have their, they feel a way about it. But sometime in my life, I mean, I'd love to draw Batman. I think that would be killer. But what Batman? I mean, Batman 89 would be pretty sweet. Um, but what other, uh, like, what other version do you guys like? I mean, I'm, I get a ton of different versions I like. I'm, I've experimented with kind of my own version of Batman, but. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I used to be like a, a pretty big Jim Lee guy, like Hush era Batman. But now I think I'm more in the... Um, I'm not gonna end up drawing these anyway. I'm in the I'm in the uh I was into like Sean Gordon Murphy's Batman too. I actually really love I love the design of that Batman. Um Mignola's Batman I also love. I feel like that goes without saying though. Zombie chin. Okay. I got the window open because it's super hot here and there are these people that... Uh, we got new neighbors that just moved in across the road and they fucking, they hit the biggest bong I have ever seen in my life and hacked their lungs out. So hopefully you guys aren't picking up on that because it's really disgusting. Okay. Pete, what's going on, buddy? Thanks for tuning in at midnight Eastern. Yeah, it fucking writes lefties rule. Everybody, uh, everybody really knows it deep down. I've played so many shows where, uh, like, I pull out my left-handed guitar and people are like, oh, man, you must have a hard time finding guitars, and they act like it's kind of this, like, bad deal, and I know they're jealous deep down. Everybody wants to be Jimi Hendrix. Everybody. Every guitar player. So, of course, they're jealous when they see me pull out a lefty guitar because they know they can't play it. All right. Okay, that's coming along. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm not going to make this one a super long stream, I don't think. I, uh, I'm i starting with a bit like, I'm going to just start with some simple shit, get used to the gear and, uh, and everything like that. Um, speaking of gear, I got to see how my shit's running here. All right, it's good. It's good. We're not dropping frames. Not as far as I can tell, so that's good. Yeah, I'm probably going to get into some more like detailed stuff. And actually, if you guys are interested in it, I mean, I'll probably have to get Mad Cave's permission, or I'll just ask their forgiveness, but uh, I might just like live ink some panels of uh of the next series if you guys are into that sort of thing <laughs> this is working out okay
All right, let's hit it with the heavy blacks. My favorite part. It's everybody's favorite part. I should ask, like, are, are you guys, is there any, are there any, I'm just looking at some comments here. Um, are there any other drawers? Do you guys, do any of you guys draw? I was thinking, like, again, I haven't fully sorted out exactly what this channel is yet, except for it's me drawing, watching Batman, maybe baseball every now and then, definitely having a drink and just chatting to some good people. Um, I mean, most artists are doing, like, you know, it's a lot of how-to stuff, which is great. I mean, I love those videos, but part of me thinks I'm probably not to the level where I should be telling people how to draw anything. I also just like, I don't know. It's kind of like, what's the right way to say this without sounding like a complete dick? <laughs> Like a how-to video on something is interesting because like all artists go about things different ways. Like back in the day, you know, there was like a certain way that artists drew faces and like men's faces and women's and stuff. And it was a bit more, maybe a bit more uniform. But now I think like it's kind of anything goes. I don't know. I just, I think I'd feel like if I told you how I draw hands or if like this is how I draw heroes eight heads tall like I don't even know what that means I mean I kind of know what it means but I don't really give a shit because I draw by feel Pete Michaels will tell you I draw like I golf it's all by feel you just got to go for it figure your thing out and there's a ton of really good um there's already that's the other thing I think there's already a ton of pros who have done amazing tutorial videos where like I mean do you really need to know how I draw hands and shit, maybe down the road when I'm more confident and comfortable with telling people what to do with their art. <laughs> I'm drawing his, um, you can't tell because like it, this is mostly like a, it's mostly a headshot, but this is like his, this is his Arc 2 costume. Only really like this part right here is his Arc 2 costume. That's all you can really see anyway, but. Um, man, I can't wait for you guys to check out the second Arc. Like the story is unreal. Honestly, like it's so fun to draw. There's like, David put so much shit in there for me to figure out how to draw. It's good for me. It's good for me to try new things. The sheriff has this big cloak. This pen that I'm using right now is awesome, but the ink doesn't dry very fast, so I always get the shit everywhere, it seems like. hand in the way here? Probably. And yeah, back to something I was saying before, because there are a million, a million different um, artist drawing videos. Yeah, like I want to hear what people want to hear me talk about or what they want me to draw or like yeah, other cool shit that we can talk about here. I mean, I love that you guys are just like chatting amongst yourselves over there. That's fun. Okay. He's going to start with like eyeballs, but probably very quickly going to go away. All 
right, now we're getting somewhere. As soon as you start hitting it with the heavy blacks, then it like starts to look like a picture. Hair. Yeah, it's got like just greasy black hair. So I found that uh, greasy hair is easy to draw. Beautiful women's hair. Not that it's hard to draw, but it's just a little more precise. Women are just harder to draw in general. Everything about women is better than everything about men. So why it just stands to reason that they're also more difficult to draw. Because they're fucking perfect. All right. I'm doing this thing where I'm like just fucking around with like these details that 100% are going to just get covered in black. But it's the process. How do you decide what area to work on? Is there an order or just feel? Good question, Pete. Pete is a pro podcaster. I just did his podcast called The Road to Stage coming out on Wednesday. Um, so he asks like cutting edge hard nose questions like that. <laughs> I appreciate it, Pete. No, that's a good question, buddy. Honestly, um, it's part go by feel, but when it comes to this part of it, like when you're, um, they call this spotting blacks, which is kind of like um, putting like some of your larger areas of black in to get sort of like the, the deeper shadows and that sort of thing. Um, I tend to start with, where I know there's going to be black, like I knew his, um, like inside his mouth is totally black. His eyes are going to be black. So if I'm not a hundred percent sure where I should start, I always just start in the areas. Like I know they're going to be solid black and I'm not going to draw anything else in there. It's like, it's just the easiest place to start. And then once I find that like, once those areas are kind of, well, that's why they call it spotting blacks. Like once those areas are filled with black you start to see the picture pop out and then it usually just uh yeah then it sort of go by feel and it starts to sort of occur to me where i need to be going next so yeah it's like a it's a bit of both good question shane you should join the mad cave discord i will do it for fucking eight thousand dollars a day notice i didn't laugh when i said that because i'm serious Um, I'm only partially serious. As artists, we're asked to do free shit all the time. And, uh, I like, I like to do things, but, uh, I also like to get paid for the hours and hours of work this takes, you know, it's a crazy holdover from, uh, all my years as a musician of getting shitty when people are like, Hey, you should come play my party for free. Um, or they'll offer you beer money, which when I was like 21, and we were out touring, that's one thing, but when you have bills to pay and all that sort of thing, yeah, doing it for free. But anyway, maybe I won't be such a dick and I'll join their Discord. That could be fun. I'll be honest, I didn't know, I didn't really know what they had that, they don't invite me for a lot of things. Get Amy or Allison to add you. Well, if Amy or Allison are up at midnight, they would know. They would know they should add me right now. They'd say, "Oh shit, we feel so bad that we hadn't uh, we hadn't asked them before." This is my secret weapon for doing the um, like the texture on Ev's cloak. You guys will notice if you look through uh, like the the five Nottingham books, the way I draw a lot of his shit changes and it's just like total experimentation. Cause it's like a big, like fur cloak. Um, and you know, there's a million ways to draw everything. There's a million ways to draw fur and you know, get these textures. And as I go, 
my whole deal right now is just experimenting with everything. Like I've got a million different tools here. There's like my go-to stuff. Um, and then there's stuff that like I really like to use and some things that I try and I don't like or I'm just not any good at. Um, so I've experimented with a lot of things, but I really like this texture for his cloak. Polly, I think it's like four staff members and us. So that's cool. Maybe I'll join. I'll join. I won't be such a jerk. See, this is part of my midnight drawer persona. I'm like, uh, I'm like a disgruntled drawer. I could have called it the disgruntled drawer, because usually by the time it's this late and uh, getting into anything past midnight, you start to just get mad at everybody for. I get mad at David for writing stories that are so cool but really hard to draw, and I get mad at people for giving me deadlines. And but usually after I get a long two hours of sleep, I feel way better about myself and I'm much more agreeable. And, I transform back from the midnight drawer to just like regular, like rock and roll Shane. Paul, thanks for joining. Much appreciated. Have a good sleep. Ah, uh, yeah, you'll see the rest of this tomorrow. And uh, man, I'll join up. Maybe I'll join up on that Discord. I appreciate that, buddy. Take care. <laughs> you either, pal. Okay. Hey, this is starting to look like something now. God damn, I forgot to tell Paul to like, follow, and subscribe. Next time, if Paul ever, if Paul comes back, smash that button, Paul. One sec, intermission. I just ran out of ink. Okay, we're back. I gotta say the Mad Cave people have been super cool. I like, I could joke about them being jerks to me, but they've honestly been awesome. They literally took a guy who had never drawn a comic book ever in his life and probably had no fucking business drawing a comic book <laughs> at my skill level, but like, Man, they liked what I was doing and saw something in it and, like, give me a shot. And I got to tell you, in comic books, um, in acting, in music, there are very, very few people that will take a legitimate chance on, um, like, just raw talent. Somebody that, like, maybe they, sh maybe they honestly shouldn't be fully doing it yet, but, like, they see something in there and, like, they let me just... Mostly they let me experiment on pages and just do my thing and build my style and all that. And it's crazy. I can't even joke around about it because it was so cool. They've been so good to me with that stuff. That's the last nice thing I'll say all night. It's over. It's over now. Watching me draw is almost as much fun as jumping up and down to Psycho Killer McMain. That's high praise. Because I've seen you jump up and down to Psycho Killer many, many times in my life. No one does it like you, buddy. It's almost time for a new one of these. I'm glad you guys are enjoying it because... Um, you know, it's funny. I thought, like, would anybody even give a shit to watch me draw? But I like watching drawing videos. Like, I... It's like watching other bands play. It's cool to see other people do the things that you like and see how they do it. If that even made sense. Ooh, 
gloves. Sorry, I'm covering the picture with my hand, but I am left-handed, so you have to deal with that. All right, this is starting to look like something here, finally. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> nice speed. Tom, I fully agree, man. The like the uh, the competition Mad Cave does is like I'll I'll be honest. When I found it, um, like I I applied in the summer of 2019, and it, like I think there was two weeks left in the competition or something like that. Um, I like I didn't think it was real, to be honest. Like I'm not just saying that. I thought I was like, no one does this. Like comic companies don't hire nobody's to draw their books even if they're like a small independent um but it was legit and like honestly yeah there was a there was a good chunk of the process of me doing that where i really thought like excuse me i was like even if i land a book they probably don't pay or it's like you know some mostly i was just waiting for it to be like some bullshit scam um but man they just Everybody at Mad Cave loves comics and they love new talent and want to actually legitimately, I mean, they want to sell books because that's the game, of course, but like, yeah, like they're actually about giving people a chance and it's crazy. Like, again, I love music and, you know, that's my main gig. One Bad Sun's still my main gig, but man, no one give us chances like that, like opening for... Def Leppard and um, the Stones show and all that like that didn't come no one was like man you guys would be a great band I think you'd do a great job I mean that that's like at the that's the culmination of years and years and years of work and trying to convince people that you're good enough to play those gigs and um, I mean I'm super fortunate that we were able to play them but it wasn't like this where it was just like uh if we like you, we'll hire you and actually pay you money to do the thing. Do I feel it before it's drawn? Deep in my bones, Tom. No. I, uh... Sometimes I have a really good idea of what I want to draw. Like, I'll have a... I'll have, like, a... A picture in my mind kind of already... There, and then I'll figure out how I want to go about it other times I find it really hard to um just come up with the thing like I'll be honest like I'm not even super happy with this like it's kind of fun and I'm getting used to the whole uh live streaming thing and it's so it's a good one to start on but I'm already thinking like oh I gotta amp this up next time around so it's like sometimes I have a very clear idea of what I want to do sometimes I'm not quite as clear especially if you're drawing all the time I mean, you're not always inspired quite the same way, but uh, I also do this thing. It's like one of my favorite artists is um, Bill Sienkiewicz, and I've watched him draw, and he draws the same. It made me feel good about myself because I always assume guys, his, like, I mean, the guy's an absolute, he's like the Eddie Van Halen of comic books. Um, and I assume that he had like a whole roadmap in his head of what he was going to draw, but he openly admitted, he's just like, man, I, half the time, I don't know where the fuck I'm going, and then you just hope it comes together in the end, and usually it does for him, because, again, he is the Eddie Van Halen of comic book art, um, so yeah, it's a bit of both, sometimes I'm very clear, like, extremely clear on what it's supposed to kind of look like, and what I'm trying to achieve with the whole thing, and sometimes it's just an absolute, um, it's just an absolute crapshoot. And I just like, yeah, I literally hope that I can pull it off in the end. And I'll admit too, I I came into comics at a really good time because um because I did the first books all digitally, 
I uh, I got really good at drawing, like using the tools, like using Photoshop and stuff. So I'm like, if something really goes off the rails and just doesn't turn out, I always know I can take it and throw it into Photoshop and like fix whatever isn't working and all that. So uh, long story short, yeah, I don't know, half the time, half the time I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. But that means the other half that I do. I love how your background blacks really bring out the entire piece. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. Honestly, again, I love, like when I started to really get into Mike Mignola stuff and um, artists like that, artists like Jock, it was like there's so much black on the page, but there, it just brought everything to life. Um, I just, man, I just fell in love with that stuff. So that means a lot. I appreciate it. Just kind of getting these little details in here. So one of the thing about the heavy blacks too is like the focus, even though like this is a pretty small picture, the focus is on his face. So, you know, the more that's blacked out around him, you know, the more focus goes in on his face. And that's kind of the point. If, if you're drawing with a lot of black, um, I also draw, excuse me. I also draw like, I kind of draw, like we got an amazing colorist on Nottingham, Luca Romano, but I draw kind of, I hate to say this, not really with the colorist in mind. I sort of draw thinking in terms of black and white. Um, and I mean, he, he blows that stuff away when he gets some color on it. But um, so yeah, I'm kind of thinking in, in heavy blacks and how it's going to help whatever the main part of the image pop. So what artist inspires you? I feel Frank Miller, Mignola, Grandpa vibes too. Grandpa, I don't know. That's great. I love, that's one thing I'm hoping that people will uh, give me new shit to, unless you're talking about your grandpa, in which case I've never seen his work. But, oh, absolutely, Mignola. And uh, yeah, Frank Miller, like certain eras of Frank Miller, right? Because, um, I mean, there's the obvious stuff, like, uh, uh, Dark Knight, of course, and Sin City, but then, you know, I mean, a lot of people hate Dark Knight 2, though, I don't know, I feel like, love or hate the art in those books, I love that he just, like, never stopped experimenting, I thought that was super cool, like, Frank Miller is well, he's fucking Frank Miller. He's one of the greatest of all time for a reason. But he also, yeah, I don't know. I just love, I love any artist who didn't just like find the style and like that's it for the next 40 years, you know. And I don't know that guys like Miller actually were trying to just stay relevant more than just they kept pushing their art. And uh, I mean, that's the deal. Like if you're going to do this, it's like music, honestly. You, unless you want to become the ultimate parody of yourself, you know, you want to try to stay fresh. And I think that's why bands like the Stones were able to do it so long because they weren't afraid to try new shit and, you know, and honestly, maybe fail every now and then. I think you have to be able, you have to be willing to do that. Same with Metallica, bands like that. Like people hated some kind of monster, but. Man, in 2001, if they'd have tried to redo Load, people would have absolutely hated it. And uh, if they'd have tried to write the new Master of Puppets, people would have really hated it. So, you know, I always appreciated that bands like that and artists like Frank Miller are just like, fuck what people think. Like, I'm just going to keep working on my stuff. And hey, if it goes to a place that's weird, you can always bring it back. Um, but there's no, there's no solution for boring. You can't fix boring. Boring is just boring. So I'd rather people hate the shit than be lukewarm on it. So Moon Knight or Two-Face? I should write these down. Definitely jock vibes. Okay. Moon Knight, Judge Dredd, Two-Face, um... Yeah, Tom, I'm just reading here. 
yeah, you love Luca as well, and his color is like it's it's crazy good. But it, I think it's neat. I'd love to do a black and white book as well. And I should say this: here comes a plug. Um, when the video comes out on the uh, week from Friday, 28th or 29th, um, that's when I'm dropping the Shiver comic book as well. Actually, fuck it. You guys want to see here? Halftime show. Do you guys want to see a couple of uh, pages from the Shiver comic? My feed's a little slow here, so I got to make sure. Okay. Okay, if I see people want to see a page or two from the Shiver comic, I'll throw it up for uh, the halftime show. I kind of fucked his sword up, but whatever. I hope I'll be forgiven. <laughs> Pete. My, uh, my computer almost can't handle running. Um, ironically, like I'm using the OBS software. That's open broadcasting, not the band, but it really drew me in. Um, but my computer has a hard time running it and like allow me to follow the chat as well. So it's lagging a bit for me. So, okay. We got yeses from, uh, all the midnight faithful here. I need a, you guys can think about what to call. I need to, what, what do I call the people? Like I'm the midnight drawer right now. So what does that make? What does that make you guys? I'm taking, uh, I'll take notes. Okay, I'm going to, Kylo Ren. Okay. Actually, I like Kylo Ren. I mean, I like Vader better, but not, this is like a, I could go, maybe a, this is what the channel turns into is just fighting with people over Star Wars and uh, prequels and stuff, but. Okay, I'm going to flip over to OBS here quick. I'm going to lose the chat for a sec, but then I can see what I'm doing. Boom. I spent a lot of time drawing myself with this book, which was incredibly weird. Anyway, what to reveal? Okay, here's a cool spread. So it's the uh, it's the adaptation of here. Let me get the uh, let me get the split screen out of there. Yeah, it's like the it's the comic adaptation of the music video. So once you see the music video, this all makes sense. Um, I won't reveal too much because when this like actually posts, my publicist might be pissed. But also, it's my song, and you know, I'm paying for all the publicity. So whatever, if I disclose a few things. There you go, some stuff. A couple of pages. Um, there, last ones. I got this jacket hanging down in the closet right now. My mom bought it for me, it's so cool. There you go. Halftime sneak preview of the Shiver comic right there. Midnight Watchers, Midnight Minions. Oh, I like that. All right. All right, cool. Thanks for checking that out with me, guys. It's uh, It was super fun to do, but like I said, drawing myself for that long was definitely a bit strange. <laughs> um, thanks, guys. Pete, thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Uh, to answer somebody's question that I think is gone now, but... Um, I'm going to be selling them at Red Skull Comics only. So it's going to be available on Amazon, which I'll admit I have no fucking love for Amazon, but um, I'm just trying to get the thing out in any kind of way that's like user friendly. So yeah, it's like speaking of Darth Vader, it's like dealing with the fucking evil empire when you use Amazon and shit like that. But for what I need right now, it worked great. Um, so it's going to mostly just be for 
unfortunately, anybody in the U.S. and most everywhere in Canada except for Calgary, it's only going to be available in digital. But I got some copies, and I'm going to do some giveaways and stuff, um, and you'll be able to buy it at Red Skull for sure. But I will say this. Um, I'm in charge of it, and it didn't. it's not coming out through a comic company or anything. So, man, if you guys want copies and if there's demand and stuff, I'll see what I can do about um, ordering up more prints. So don't worry, the midnight drawers, the midnight drawers got you. I'll take care of you. <laughs> Damn you, Bezos! You're, you're fucking quick and efficient, yet relatively unfriendly service. I mean, maybe I should just like, I guess I could really out myself right now, but I'm a fairly liberal minded human being, which is always funny for me. Like anytime you like <laughs> as an artist, when you come out as being fairly liberal and people are like shocked by it, that always, I, I always, I kind of find that funny. I think it, I always thought it just sort of went with the territory, but anyway. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'll probably sell some from the site. The only problem is like, and I'll fully admit this, you know, it really, I know there was a lot of, um, like there was some ordering bullshit with like the, with um, Nottingham and stuff. And I know some of the stores were kind of pissed about it. And, but doing this like little comic book on my own, this like little 18 page one shot comic book, give me a total new appreciation for like, just the bullshit, especially a small publisher like Mad Cave has to go through to get their books out and how much it costs to get things printed. And, you know, and then you're turning around and you're selling the thing for like three bucks and you're not making jack shit on it, really, unless, unless of course, it's a massive hit. Um, more plugs, unless it's a massive hit, like, you know, One Bad Son's Raging Bull or um, The Midnight Drawer's Own Nottingham. You know, unless it's a hit like that, <laughs> then you make money on it. But it's like, the thing about comics is it's a trading game, right? Like, that's why you need to sell 10,000 copies of a book in order for it to make money. So I'm going to, I'll do my best. Um, I got these ones printed up in the U.S. and it just cost me an arm and a leg to get shit um, shipped up here. So I want to see if I can maybe find a Canadian company to get them to me quicker. So... If I move beyond uh, 15 subscribers and uh, we get some comic manufacturers out there that want to print a bunch of shiver issues, well, give the drawer a call. Shoot me an email. Okay, this is coming along now. I hope you guys can see what is happening here. Who did the colors on the cover? This guy right here. It didn't turn out quite like I was hoping, uh, the cover colors. But um, for my first try ever doing my own color, see this is what happens, you just fuck it. Right? It doesn't look quite right, so you just take this. And once it's all black, then it looks, it looks great every time. This marker's running out. Um, yeah, I was experimenting with the colors there myself. I, uh, for you comic book guys out there, guys and girls, um, I love flat color. Like, I love the look of 1970s comic. I love 1970s comic books the way Kurt Dahl loves 1970s music. And so, for you OBS fans, you'll understand what that means. I love just because they couldn't do all the crazy shit like you can do with um you know photoshop or or whatever software you're using to color comics now which i mean i like modern color too don't get me wrong like it's cool and for some books it really lends itself very well to like the type of art but man i love just 
you know, when they would do just like a full, like a red background, like just a red sky, one color, there's no anything in it except for that single color in your character pops. Like, I just love that shit. Um, and I would love to try to convince somebody sometime on some book that I work on to do... Again, I love the shit that Luca does, and I think it looks really cool on the Nottingham stuff, but uh, I don't know. I just, I would love to see my work with kind of uh, retro, retro colors. And then I can put music out to that book, and then I can put that music on vinyl, and I can complete li my life's mission. I'm going to call Red Skull tomorrow. <laughs> Well, for uh, my Midnight Warriors or my Midnight Minions, I I love some of these uh, suggestions. I'm gonna I'll do some thinking on it. I can probably get you guys a hook up here, so don't jump don't jump too soon because uh, Kelly at Red Skull is a he's a real good guy and he will get you the books if you wanted. But I can probably for my Midnighters here, I can probably figure something out. So don't panic. I feel like if you attended the inaugural episode of the Midnight Drawer, you're probably you're entitled to pay me upwards of five dollars for a comic book. But we'll see. I'll see what I can sort out. I'm giving him like uh I'm giving him like the uh like an old granny neck. Uh, let's go to let's go to this one. Yeah, I'm yakking and I should be drawn here. This is starting to get a bit long, probably, so let's rock it. Man, I'll tell you, once you get, like, to this point, and then you just want to fucking, like, hit it with details and just, like... I know my mom is going to watch some of these and my beautiful wife is going to watch me swear probably too much on this. But just like what I say on stage is that I learned to swear from my father who, it's not like he swore all the time, but he wasn't light on the swearing. So I always thank him for my potty mouth, but it's also the midnight jar. It's not the like 10 a.m. or like 8 a.m. have cereal with your kids and a coffee and like a polite conversation drawer, you know what I mean? It's like, it's midnight drawer, and you know, sometimes the booze flows freely, and the language gets a little, a little on the f bomb side. Red Skull of an online store. Ah, uh, that I'm not actually too sure about. Got word that my Nottingham color fade cover, 9.8, Jesus. Nottingham question, what is your fave non-Shane cover for the series? Oh, man. Um, that's still my fave cover. Yeah, let me throw that up here. I'll make sure I can see it. Boom. That's my fave cover still. First cover I ever drew. Ever. Let's see if I have these in here. I don't have it right beside me, and I'm a little too wired up to go get it. But there was a cover by... I feel really bad because I don't... I, I think it was... I don't 100% remember the artist's name, but it was like, uh, it was kind of cartoony. It was like painted. Um, yeah, it almost like looked like a Disney version. So, Tom, the F word is the most versatile. Yeah, that's 100% true. Yeah, there was a cover done by somebody, and if anybody can remember his or her or their name, um, I just don't remember off the top of my head, but I really liked that, uh, that cover. It was like very, yeah, very cartoony. Um, again, it kind of looked, it reminded me of like what the Disney version of this would be like. And I thought it was like, I thought it was so fucking cool. So whoever 
I did that one. That was that was my favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Line breakers. That's what it was. The line breakers cover. That's the one. I'm I'm ninety nine percent sure. Okay, you know what? I mean, I could do, I could sit here and noodle on this thing for a long time still. And probably after the stream is over, I might kind of jerk around with it a bit yet, but I just need to I need to add a couple of flourishes here and then I think That didn't work. And then I think we're done. Give the sword some action here. I don't really know what I did with this sword. I kind of feel like I blew it. Actually, no, that kind of looks cool. It's funny when you're drawing like this, uh, I especially when I'm doing like the the actual pages and there's just so much shit going on. I get lost in my brain and I'm like locked in on a piece and then I have to stop and just take a step back and wonder what the fuck I just did. Anyway, a little bit more. Stacy, thank you so much. Need a rooster playing the guitar and whistling. Oh man. I love it. Actually, I got my guitar over there. I should, if I could figure out a way that I could, uh, I could strum a song on one of these because I, I love, there's a couple songs from that Disney movie that I love to play. Let me make sure this is... One second. Dana's favorite part, drool on the teeth. I'll fix that up. Man, I need some new... Uh... I need some new white oak stuff sucks. Okay, that needs to dry for two seconds. Dave Cobra, sign and frame, very cool. Yeah, there was, um, man, there was totally some some really cool, uh, like alternate covers to that series. I got questions for you guys about. Uh, I actually got some questions for Nottingham fans about some of the stuff, but because I'm almost done here, I'm gonna save those for next time. Fill in the drool on his teeth here. No, that's not dry. But yeah, I, I got questions about um, yeah, what you guys thought about some of the stuff. I think my zombie Ev is just about done here. Yeah, that commission was super cool. I'm really, really happy that you like it. Drop Bob and Doug McKenzie. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
Ah, uh, here, let me frame this thing up and make sure it looks right. We'll toss a signature. I think, I mean, I think that looks... I think that's looking pretty good. Again, I just keep going here. Like, when I'm actually drawing the issues, you know, you, you really... There's a point where, like, you've got to just fucking stop. Like, you have to... And honestly, it's... As much as people, and even myself, complain about... Uh, deadlines and stuff i gotta tell you it's like it's a blessing in disguise because you have to get the shit done and so even though there's definitely pages in those first five issues and even in the ones that i'm doing right now that you really wish like you had the time to just um go back and redo it really is like a blessing in disguise to be like i don't have time to do it i don't have time to do it and it's just it's done i could have done like a ton more detail and a bunch of extra stuff, but uh, it's, you know, it's to quote the great Alice in Chains, when you just say it's over now. Okay, I just have to get his gums, have to be a little more vibed out. And some lines going that way, that's what we're missing. Okay. All right, one sec here now. Let's get the let's get the signature in here. My rarely used ruler. I need to put this up on something. My dad's leather work will do the trick. It's because my camera's at a bit of an angle here, so it's a little distorted. There. I think, everybody, I think that's the zombie Ev. I won't call Red Skull, wait for your midnight special connect. Yeah, you know what I need to do is get just like a, a bit of a list and see, and I can hold on to a couple for you guys. That's how you did the words on the number six cover. Yeah, the actually, no, I used that, uh, like, you mean the, um, actually, I can show you. If I have it here. I feel really bad because I'm like, got a bunch of stuff you guys are absolutely not allowed to see sitting right here but that cover shit no sorry next time i'll have uh i can show you kind of how i did that cover it was kind of the same slightly different sorry my bad oh here i gotta bring my face back on here i guess i don't have to but i'm going to yeah um that cover, I, uh, yeah, I used like, it's like white, kind of a white media, like liquid paper to get um, all of those like medieval, it's supposed to look like a medieval tapestry. Um, Pete McMain, you guys are too kind. I appreciate it. Um, just trying to think here of, there was some other stuff I wanted to say. I just want to, uh, I do want to say that, um, yeah, I'm just really appreciative of you guys coming and hanging with me for the uh, the first ever Midnight Drawer. Um, you know, like, follow, and subscribe like you're supposed to do. And uh, I'd say hit the bell, but if you don't want uh, your phone ringing every time the drawer is doing something live, that's fine. But, you know, tell a friend if you guys enjoyed this. This was fun, honestly. I'll tell you this. If it was only ever you people... On this, I'll still do it like once or twice a week because this was super cool and fun. So um, I got lots of questions to ask you guys uh, about your experience of some of the comic stuff and rock and roll stuff. Um, I know for a fact, as soon as I hit stop the stream that I'm going to remember, I was going to say a bunch of things. But uh, mostly I'm just super appreciative 
Um, I might do another one of these this week. Most likely I'll do, I'm going to probably start with like a once a week kind of thing. Um, Bell already clicked. Love it. <laughs> but yeah, I'll, uh, I just thought, I felt like it was good to just get these started and get going so that I could, um, yeah, so that I could just get used to the all the tech and shit. But this was super, super fun. McMain, yeah, there's a bell, buddy. Come on. <laughs> this was super fun, you guys. So, yeah, uh, if you've already subscribed, I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I'm mostly just doing this for my own entertainment and uh, just share more art with the world. And I'm pumped for the new song to be out on Friday. So, most likely, when I come back, the song will be out. So there's not going to be like a specific day that I'm going to do this on. For the first little while here, it's going to be a little bit random, but it's always going to be late at night. Um, and we'll probably talk a bit of uh, a bit of whiskey and stuff too. But I will say, when I come back next week, the song's going to be out. I want to know what you guys think. And uh, yeah, I just, uh, I didn't hear no bell. <laughs> Okay, I know I'm going to have a good time on this when people are bringing up Rocky quotes. So we're going to be we're going to be just fine. So you guys, you're awesome. Uh, I just want to say thank you so much again. And I apologize if I forgot to say like 50 things I was going to say. And this was super cool. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these. There might be some giveaways and all that. But I will figure that out. And I will let you guys know next time. And yeah, I just want to say one more time. You guys. Whatever you're going to be called, my my Midnight Warriors. I'm an, I'm an alliteration guy. Um, my wife loves alliteration, and now that's kind of our deal. So it's, it's, maybe it's got to be an MM thing, but we'll figure that out. So uh, to all the Midnight Faithful right now, thank you guys so much for coming to the first stream. Uh, and take care and be safe out there. All right. Peace. <laughs>